father and son. Amen. They drove up, got up early. I want you to know these persons were out of their bed at five, probably at five o'clock. Some people didn't even sleep, um, trying to make sure that they don't miss the alarm. There were some people I had to call to make sure they was up. Maybe one or two, amen. But let's go in our Bibles today to First Corinthians, Second Corinthians today. So we had a, we had a, we were, this isn't, this is, I, I was telling Minister Lang, I said, this is my third phase, my third gear. My first gear was the baptism. The second gear was going to the family, amen. They got to make sure they're right now. The third gear is bringing the word. And I mean, it's only about 11, 12 o'clock now. And so I got to be in a lot of gears today. <laughs> Amen, Lord again. So y'all pray for your bishop. Amen. Pray for the man of God. Pray for him. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. If you're here for the first time, this is your first time in Jump Ministries Global Church. Let me see your hands. This is your very first time in this ministry today. Your first time. First time in this ministry. Amen. Come here, honey. First time in the ministry. Give this to this beautiful couple right here. Amen. And tell them, amen. Bless them with them flowers today. Amen. That's from Jump Ministries. Right there on the second row. Yeah. Raise your hands. You just want to. God's thinking about you, Miss Lady. Clap your hands for her today. Isn't that awesome, y'all? That's such a blessing. Amen. You can put them on the ground. They, they ain't going to break. They ain't going to break. I promise you. Somebody else got blessed today. I see another lady. Come here, Takeda. Amen. There's a young lady in the back there. She's on the side of the gentleman with the white shirt on. She raised her hand. She said, I'm a first time or two. Amen. I want you to bless and welcome her to jump in. Clap your hands for them, y'all. That's just a blessing, a token. You could go to any church in the world. But you chose to be with us today, and we appreciate you coming to us. We don't take you for granted. Amen? I tell people the greatest investment in the world is not the stock market. It's not, it's not Bitcoin. The greatest investment you could ever make is in people. Okay, you'll get that one later. Say, prove it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Where did he make his investment? Three, or in you and me. The greatest investment which when you could invest in persons' lives. If you make money, you could spend it. But fate is eternal. What is faith? That investment is still being seen today. You could die and, and, and your children will partake in that investment. Their children will live on for that because of Christ's investment. So don't ever forget the greatest investment, Jacob, is you could make it in the kingdom. They're not words. I've already started preaching. From you walking the door, preaching already started. Started when the person put their arms around you. So the service already begun. The greatest investment is when you could invest in somebody's life. It's when you could invest in where? somebody's life somebody say grace. grace say it again say grace. grace how many of you believe that you need grace grace is almost like a pass grace is what grace is God's mercy over judgment somebody say grace grace is when God wakes us up some of the things we've been through we should have had plenty penalties for but God showed grace Oh, yeah, some of the times we, we drive drunk, nobody in this room. Some of the times we, we did things and didn't even remember what we did the next day. It was grace that kept you. Some of the time you lost your mind. You didn't know where the money was coming from. You didn't know where your finances was, come from, was coming from. It was grace. What was, was, what was it? Grace. When you should have lost the car and kept the car, it was God's grace and mercy. Amen. When things were coming against you, you didn't know how you were going to make it. You thought you were going to lose your mind. It was God's grace that sustained you. You didn't do it on your own. I think sometimes it's important for us to understand we didn't survive on our own. It wasn't your strength that brought you this far. It was the grace and the favor of God and the mercies of God. Am I preaching to anybody in here? I ain't preaching yet. I'm just talking a little bit. It was the grace of God. Somebody say grace. I don't know about you, but I need grace. I need grace. I shared this story before. I, I, when I first came over, somebody had let me use their truck, and I was driving without a license. Amen. Pray for me. I was young. I was around 18, 19. I was driving without a license, and, and the police pulled me over, and they gave me a ticket. What they gave me? How many of you ever got a ticket before? Okay, thank you all for those who told, tell the truth. Amen. I know it wasn't just me. How many of you ever got pulled over before? And you escaped the ticket. That was grace. Amen. But some of us, we did get the ticket. Amen. I was one that I got the ticket. And I had to go to court. And I didn't know too much about the American system at that time. I was just coming. Didn't know how, how things went. I had to go to court. And when I went to court, the judge asked me, he said, what should I do? I said, what do you mean what you should do? I said, show mercy. 
And just how you laugh, he laughed. And he said, you know what, he laughed. I don't think he expected me to say that. And how many of you know he canceled all the tickets? I didn't have to pay no court fees. Oh, you all ain't hear me. You know why some of y'all can't clap? You can't clap because it's not personal. But when something happens personal for you, then you can identify but how powerful that is. Somebody say grace. So it was powerful. I was out of that court so fast. I asked somebody, I said, what happened? They say, you, they say, you ain't got to pay no court fee. I said, thank you, Jesus. I put my hand up and walk out of there like I was in church. Amen. How many of you know I was in church? God was with me. Let's go 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Put a bottle in his mouth. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 6, it says, Let's start from verse 5. We, we, we baptized 32 persons today. We might as well use some fa five as a number of grace and favor. Five is a number of grace. Of what? Grace, grace and favor. Five is a number of grace and favor. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory. But in my infirmities, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For though, for though I should desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me that which he had seen me to be, or that he hear it of me. He was saying, at least any man think more about me than they should. At least somebody make their boast in me, and, and they glory in me. He was, trying to, he was trying to get us to see something that he was not the one. He was not the one to, to, to the men to make their boast in. He was trying to take the focus off of him. And put the focus on the one that it belongs to. Am I making sense to anybody in here? It's so easy for us to get caught up in pride. It's so easy for us to think how wonderful we are. And how great we are. And how amazing we are. And that we have what we have. Because we worked hard for it. But I don't know about you. You might have worked hard. But how many of you there's someone that gave you the strength and the ability to work hard? And, and, and it's easy to get sidetracked and say, look what I have done. And the I is the problem. Look how wonderful I am. And look how amazing I am. And, 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 and it's okay to, for somebody to praise you, but you got to always point the praise back to God. And not because that God, you don't believe that he deserved the glory. It's because we know how we roll. We know that if we're not careful, we would make ourselves the focus and take the focus off of God. We would make it about us. And, and I, I feel like teaching this morning. And sometimes it's important for us to remember, too, that we need God. Because if you, if you don't be mindful that you need God, you would have a tendency to judge other people in their faults and their failures. One person, you would judge other people in their mistakes. You would say, I can't believe how they did that. I can't believe they, this happened to them. I can't believe they failed. I can't believe that. But when you think about your own failures and your own mistakes and how God had to show you patience, it's supposed to cause you to be able to be patient with others. Am I talking to anybody in here? It should cause you to want to be able to show grace to other people. Anybody in this room ever been through something or going through something right now? It's going to be grace that brings you through it. Be like, Bishop, how am I going to survive it? I feel like the walls are closing in. It's going to be grace. God, somebody say, God is with me. And it's good to be mindful of that, that I'm not alone. Somebody say, I'm not alone. He is Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah means that God will always be there. God is ever present, that he is there for me. God is with you. God, God, God is available to you. He walks with you. And he has his paraclete, his clean paracletos, his Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. Somebody say, I'm not alone. Yeah. It's good to be mindful for that today. I'm in the midst of battle, but I'm not alone. I'm going through my trials, but I'm... Um, so Paul was saying to, 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 as he wrote this letter, he was letting us know that, listen, uh, he said, I, I, I don't want you to glory in me. There's somebody greater that you should glory in. And he said, at least I should be exalted above measure. Now, he's putting the focus on himself because a lot of times when people tell us how wonderful we are, we could get caught up and say, yeah, yeah, I am wonderful. We could get caught up on how amazing we are. And it takes one incident to humble us. How am I preaching to anybody? Because we have a tendency to forget and, and, and then we do foolish things because of pride. Because of what? 
pride could be an issue. At least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation. He said, I, I have a lot of knowledge. I have a lot of revelation. God reveals to me things. But, but, but because of the revelation and the knowledge, I want to say this. Anytime God gives you much you need to know, he will require much from you. Anytime you get a lot of money, anytime you get a lot of fame, we always see the money, we see the fame, but there's a responsibility to everything that God gives you. It's almost like added pressure. There's a weight that comes with the position. People see supervisor, people see elder, people see leadership, people see NBA players, they see millionaires, but there's a pressure that comes because people put an expectation on you. They begin to require certain things from you. They believe that because you have it, you should always give it. Am I preaching anybody in here? They look at your failures, but they never see their own failures. Am I preaching to anybody? So Paul, he letting them know right now, I am who I am because of God. He tried to clear it up and he said, then I got to remind my own self because of the abundance of knowledge and revelation. I got to remind my own self. But how many of you know God ain't got no problem reminding you that it's not you? Anytime we get too big or we get beside ourselves, God will bring things to humble you. He will allow it for you to remember to see you, bro. This ain't you, sis. And sometimes some of us, we say, man, I don't need nobody until the car break down. I don't need nobody until the light's off. I don't need nobody. Life will show you you cannot do it alone. Oh, preach, preach up. At least I should be exalted above, above measure through the abundance of the revelation. Listen, listen, this, this part I like. This part I really, I, I, I want us to, to, to hear. He said, there was given to me, there was given to me a thorn. Now, he didn't say there was given to me a medal. He didn't say there was given to me a trophy. He said there was given to me a thorn. How many of you got something in your life be like, Lord, take it away? Anybody beside me, you got one person, one issue, something you're dealing with, be like, Lord, take this. Lord, take this person away. That co-worker, every time you come in the morning, be like, Lord, her again. That church member to be like, you couldn't say good morning, and they don't even say it with love. God will always put somebody in your circle that will provoke you. They'll provoke you to get better or bitter. Most of us, we get provoked. Play priest, black man. I know I got to preach through some things today. Most of us get provoked. Rather than get better, we get bitter. Not understanding that God is allowing some things. Because there's some things that got to be worked out of you. How many of you know you don't know what's on inside of you until you're tested? I tell somebody, they say, boy, if somebody slap me, I'll turn the other cheek. Until they slap your child. So the test will come, what will bring out what's on the inside of you. And every one of us got something on the inside of us that we got to check every once in a while. I wish I had somebody real in here. There's a side of you that that old man likes to poke his ugly head. Whether it's a temper, whether it's depression, there's something that you got to bring under subjection. There's something that God will allow, whether it's a husband, whether it's a wife, whether it's a child, whether it's a co-worker. There will be something that God will allow to check you. Am I preaching right to anybody in here? The Bible says, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Somebody say, why me? Have you ever had to deal with something and you ask yourself, maybe two, two of you. Have you ever went through a struggle and asked yourself? Have you ever had to deal with a death, deal with a family member and ask yourself? So Paul was dealing with a situation where God had put a, allowed a thorn. And listen, to the thorn in the flesh, y'all ain't ready for this, was a messenger of the devil. Uh-oh, somebody say hallelujah. Now let's ride. How could God allow the thorn to be a messenger of heaven? He said it was a messenger of Satan. So God allowed Paul's thorn to be a messenger. How many of you know you can't decide what your thorn can be? I know some of us, we pick and choose what we want to deal with. Uh -uh, because if you had to pick and choose the test, how many of you know you would choose the easy test every time? 
God doesn't give you what you want. God gives you what you need. And not because he's some bad God, because he's trying to provoke us to come higher. God knows that you got more on the inside of you than what you're giving. And the test will bring the best out of you. How many of you know pressure will bring the best out of you? Say, priest, black man, pressure will bring the best out of you. Text somebody, say, pressure will bring the best out of you. And not just that, it will kill what ain't supposed to be there if you let it kill it. It will kill the things that are lying undercurrent. I don't care how much you smile. I don't care how much you pretend like everything's okay. God will get to the root of you. You can't avoid God. You can't duck God. You may avoid me. You may not want to answer my call. You may not want to answer my email. You may not want to answer my text message. You could avoid me. But how many of you know you cannot avoid God? God will deal with you late in the midnight hour. He will make you deal with. Tell somebody I got to deal with some areas. And some areas that God is allowing. That's what I want you to hear. Areas that who is allowing? You know, a lot of me like, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. How are you going to rebuke what is God? Devil, I command you to get thee behind me. And you're rebuking the devil and God said, this is what I'm allowing for you. Okay, y'all can get that later. He said, the message of Satan to buffet me. So that means there was a fight going on. There was warfare taking place. How many of you ever feel like, Bishop, I'm in the midst of a war. There's a mind battle going on there. There seemed to be a war in my job, a war in my home. If there was a messenger of Satan. There was spiritual warfare. He said to buffet me. Listen to why. How many of you know we got to read the whole book? He said the reason why the messenger was given to me or God allows things. Somebody say, God knows me. God will never allow you to have a relationship or be in the church that is ideal for you. Because God will put you in a church with a bunch of people that don't like you. Somebody was saying to me this morning, anytime that God has given you love, it's because God knows that you have the ability to love. So God knows what is in you. So the only way that you can understand that God knows what is in you and for you to recognize what is on the inside of you is through the test. You don't know how great you can be in God until you go through something. It builds faith. What it builds? He said that was given to me. He said, least, watch this. I should be exalted above measure. Be exalted for what? Because I already had revelations. I have an abundance of knowledge. So if I don't keep my eyes on, and if I don't, if God doesn't allow something in my life like a thorn, to check me every once in a while, I may try to come off like I know everything. I would be judging people on their mistakes and their failure. So what I got to do with you, Paul, even though you wrote most of the New Testament, is I got to allow you to deal with some things yourself so you can remember everything you are is because of me. Clap your hand if you understand that. He said, I've given you a message, at least you be exalted. And watch this. So how many of you ever prayed for something and you come out of prayer and the same test was still there? Have you ever prayed about something and when you come out of prayer, you'd be like, wish it was just gone? Sometimes you go into prayer and what you was dealing with, you come out of prayer and you got to deal with it even more. It's like, it's, I wish I had somebody real. It's like it's right in your face. The word is the word. What we're talking about right now is a man of God who was by the name of Paul that he himself had something to deal with. And what you got to understand, if Paul had something to deal with, guess what? You got to have something to deal with. And you cannot run from a test. And some people, boy, I can move from Orlando. I can move to Tennessee. I can move to Alabama. I can move to New York. How many of you know if you move under the will of God, you could cause your test to even become worse? Because if you don't learn what God was trying to teach you, who am I preaching to? You got to take it until you pass it. Somebody shout amen. amen. The only way you can pass a test is for you to understand that if some people say, Bishop, how come I keep taking the same test? You keep taking the same test because you keep failing. Say amen. I'm going to say, you keep taking the same test because you keep failing. Now, let me tell you something. How many of you, let me break that down. How many of you that if, if my high school or my college kept giving me the same test and I kept getting an A, I would welcome the same test every time. So if you're crying over something that's happening over and over again, it's not the test. 
is that you're failing. But if you pass the test, you won't be scared of the same test because you already know the answers. Clap your hand and give God a praise. You'll get that later. Why I keep dating the same girl? Why I keep making the same mistake? Why we keep going round and round and around and around? The reason why you keep going round and around is because you are failing the test. Let me preach. I'll never forget. This is a true story. When I first started ministry, first started, first started, and before God had told me to come to Orlando, I had to take a test. What I had to do? God will always cause you to take a test the way he's trying to take you. I had to take a test with a pastor. And the pastor and I was very close. With who? It was you and believe me, but whoever I'm talking to with a pastor. The pastor wrote me a letter. When he wrote me a letter, he began to describe. He said, this happened, this happened, this happened. And when he wrote me the letter, I was hurt. What was I? Because one of the first things we do is we always make ourselves the victim. What was I? I was hurt, whoever I'm preaching to. So I took the letter and went into prayer. I'm trying to help somebody. When I took the letter, Shabago, and I went into prayer, I said, Lord, how should I answer this letter? I'm trying to teach you. I'm teaching you if you have ears to hear. I said, Lord, how to answer the letter? My, my initial reaction was to justify, I can't believe why you said this. Why did you say that? Why did you do that? Did you, the Lord said to me, everything that he said, whether right or wrong, take the blow. The Lord said, do not argue, do not justify, take it. And he said, and the Lord showed me how to respond. I said, you know, you said I did that. You said I did that. You said I did that. I said, now that that's all the way, I said, I want to remind you of everything you said I did right. What I did? I reminded him. And then after I reminded him, I didn't get a letter no more. I got a call. When I got the call, this is what he said. I didn't mean the letter like that. I wasn't saying that. He apologized without apologizing. You'll get that one later. And then I had to take another test a few months later. And when I had to take it, the Holy Spirit reminded me, you took this test before. So because you took this test before, you don't have to worry about this because you already know the answer. How many of you know I passed it with flying colors? See, you cannot go to the next level. Good preaching. There are levels in God. He takes you from glory to glory to glory. You can't go to the next level in God. Some of y'all don't believe that. First grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. And to go to every other grade, you got to pass up. Without passing the test, you stay in the same grade. Same with God. God will allow you to go through some things. So whatever you're facing is because God is trying to shift you to the next level. But in order to go to the next level, you got to understand he's trying to work something out of you. And how's he trying to work it out of you? He's trying, you know what I heard the Lord say, I'm not trying to work it out of somebody else. Let me tell you why he's not trying to work it out of somebody else. Because the other person is not going where God's trying to take you. Where God is trying to take you with somewhere higher and further. If you don't pass the test, you stay where they are. You stay on their level. The test is not for them, it's for you. Clap your hand if you understand that today. Preach black man, let's go, let's ride. There was a messenger of Satan. You know, a lot of us say, I can't believe I break this witchcraft in the name of Jesus. This demon always walk, walking around me. I, can't, I break these generational curses. Everything Paul never said that. He said, it was a given to me, a messenger of Satan. Least I should be exalted. So what Paul said, I am putting this focus on nobody else except me. We have to learn in the house of God and in the church of God to take the focus of other people and learn to put it on yourself. How many of you know if you pray for yourself and you judge yourself, you have no time to judge other people? Three of y'all clapping, let's ride. Paul himself was given a message. You've got to ask yourself, what is your thorn today? What is the area in your life that God is saying, I'm using it to keep you humble. I'm using it to keep you on your face. I'm using it to keep you recognized, to love better. I'm using it to teach you to give better. I'm using it to teach you to serve better. I'm making you better through this test. Somebody say, God is making me better. And let me say this to you. You could run from a test or take the test. You could stay home and play sick. And say, I ain't going today. And the funny thing is, even when you play sick, some tests, they give you an F for not showing up. And some tests, they allow you to take if you, you still have to take even when you come of your sick leave. But one thing you do know is you do not get away with avoiding the test. 
He said, for this thing I besought, I'm in verse 8. What's Paul say, wait a minute, I sought the Lord three times. Now, for me, I think it's been a lot more than three times. Only me in the church. He said, for this thing. Somebody said, for this thing. Now, it never said what the thing was. Scholars argue whether it was height. Scholars argue it was eyes. Scholars argue if he, dealt, if he dealt with a limp in his body. I don't know what it was. But what I do know was, is he had a thorn. And the thorn was a messenger of Satan. It was something he did not want. Did we all agree with that? It was something he wanted to get rid of. But God said, mm-mm. Some people won't get rid of their husbands. Somebody say, mm-mm. Five years. Some people won't get rid of their wives. Some say, mm-mm. You ever met somebody trying to get rid of something and they run into something worse? They left the first marriage and then the second one was not this church. They left the third one and the third one was because it was never the marriage. It was you that God was trying to teach you something in the present marriage. Satan may let you get away with it for a little while, but anytime you do anything without the grace of God, you are in trouble. Sometimes you are in a marriage that may be troublesome, but God will give you the grace to walk through it. I'd rather be in something with God's grace and be in something without his grace. What a lot of us do is we say, God, I don't want to take it. And we say we try to do it on our own. And we try to get out of it. And God is saying, if you stayed in it, I would have given you the grace to get through it. But because you know, because what most of us, we think we know more than God. Because our problem is we won't be like God. Adam and Eve, Adam, 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 Adam. And God knows that the day you eat it, you will be like him. One of our greatest problems is we don't feel like we don't need God. But when we come to the revelation that we need God for every area of our lives. Anybody that knows that, clap their hand like you really believe it. I cannot be a pastor without God. I can't be a husband without God. I can't be a father without God. I can't be a friend without God. Because my nature is to only like what I want to like. But when you got God, you got to take the bitter with the sweets. You got to love when you don't want to love. You got to give when you don't want to give. God gives you the grace to do it when you don't want to do it. Clap your hand and give God. Preach black man. Somebody shout grace. Somebody shout grace. Stop trying to run from what God give you the grace to handle. You many church hoppers there are? I don't want to be in this church. I don't want to be in this job. Stop trying to find things to fit you and start to be in positions where God has placed you because he may be trying to groom you for your own business. Why they got me learning this position? I'm not no typist. Why they got me running to the office to get coffee? God may be strategically trying to teach you every part of a business because the day will come. You will have your own company, but you are complaining over the things you had to go through. He was trying to develop you to be an owner and not just a worker. I wish somebody in here would clap their hand. You got to pass the test. He's trying to groom you to be a great leader, a leader for the people, but he got to groom you in the midst of your test. Come, JB, on the drums. So he say, groom me, God. You better be careful when you say it. The way that God grooms you is when them thorns come. You're saying it, you to groom me, God. Woo! Tell you go inside and somebody slap you. Tell you go inside and somebody flats your tire. Somebody takes a new truck and they just key it. Because those are tests. Those are things. The devil will set up for you to take you out of the will of God. To take you from God's plan for your life. But those things that God designed, God knew what would happen before each one of us leave. God knew who would be sitting in this room today. And what seat you would be seated in and who would be beside you. God knew it from the foundations of the world. Stop trying to run from where God ordains you to be. Stop trying to run from your thorn. Stop trying to run from what makes you uncomfortable. Am I preaching right? Yeah. Honey, I can't hear you. Am I preaching right? Stop trying to blame people for the things that you're going through. God's allowing it. He's allowing it not because he's a bad God, because he has something greater. Paul had revelation and God had to show Paul. Paul, I know man. I created man. I created you. I remember Adam and Eve. I know them. I created them. And if I don't allow there to be a thorn, you would think it's you and not me. You'll get beside yourself. Why? Because everybody in this room, who am I preaching to God? Show me. Whoever in this room feel like you're under the most pressure. Whoever in this room feel like, Bishop, you don't even understand where I'm at. Bishop, you don't even understand what I'm dealing with. You don't understand how hard it is. I always tell people, wherever your pressure is, is because you're called for greatness. 
Y'all clapping just to clap. Let me ride. Let me leave you. Most alcoholics are prophets. That's why the devil tries to drown their voice out. Most people that gossip are evangelists. That's why the devil is trying to pervert. Wherever your weakness are, most prostitutes are lovers. That's why the devil try, he tries to pervert wherever your strength is. So if you want to know where you're strongest, you got to look at where you're weakest. You got to look at whatever you're dealing with. Everything that the devil is fighting you in is where your strength lies. You ain't, hear, you ain't got to hear me today. That's why he's trying to stop the power of God. He's trying to ask you why, rather than you saying, why not God? You're trying to make me better. You're trying to make me stronger. You're you're trying to make me wiser how does God do it he puts you through the fire thorns will he allow thorns what is your weakness today and you crying about it it's where your strength is I'm not telling you to live in it. I'm not telling you to bask in it but I want you to recognize if you can recognize your weakness you must dare recognize your strength when you go in the mirror you don't look at one eye you look at two eye when you go in the mirror, you don't just look at your eye, you look at your forehead, you look at your chin, you look at your face, you look inside your eyes, you clean your face. So when you go in the mirror, you see your whole face. You don't just see a part of your face. You cannot just dwell on the weakness. You got to see, baby, the strength. If you just concentrate on the strength, you've lost out the gate because the devil will begin to beat you down. He'll begin to condemn you. You will never operate in what you can be and what God has called you to be. Come on, because all you're thinking about is how weak you are and you don't think about how strong you are. You got to think about your strength. If you can think about your weakness, think about your strength. If you tell me how bad I am, tell me how good I am. Beauty is more than just outside anyway. A woman taking care of you and serving you and loving you and encouraging you is beautiful. Would you rather a woman with beautiful eyes and beautiful hair and beautiful hips and beautiful thighs and she works up miserable and never tells you any words to encourage you? There's a beauty about a woman being your strength in a time of weakness. There's a beauty about a woman being your help in a time of need that in order to lay hands upon you when you are sick, her hair can heal you. Preach black man. Yes. That's right, that's right. You better stop concentrating on physical beauty. Physical beauty and miserable on the inside. Tall dude and dead on the inside. Am I preaching to anybody in here? Oh, I ain't got to preach to nobody. I wish I had somebody real to say amen in the room. You need more than beauty as you get older. You need more that, than money as you get older. You need somebody to know how to fight with you through the dark time. Somebody to pray with you through hard time. Because sometimes it only takes the strength of God to bring you through. Somebody shout grace. Not yet. Stay with me. I, I can wind you up. I know you're ready. I can wind you up. Somebody shout grace. That's what you need today. Stop crying just about your weakness. God, still, you know what God was saying? Paul, he said, I seek in God. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, help me. He fasts and praying. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, help me. Paul said, Jesus, God, this is what God answered him. My grace. God never said I could take it away. He's seeking God to take it. And God said, you know what he said? No. Imagine some of y'all come to me in need. Now you're making me come down. <laughs> and you know you got a need. And you know you got what? Need. And your need is precedent. Your need is heavy. And you keep to me and you know I got it. And you keep to me and say, Bishop, can I have? And I say, no. You know what y'all would say? I'm out of here. <laughs> I ain't going to church no more. That's why I don't like these preachers. Because none of these preachers help you. All they want you to do is do for them. And they don't do nothing for us. Paul went to God and God said, no. Some of us don't like the word no. We are yes. And you know why it should be yes? Because we deserve yes. I pay my tithes. I pay my offering. I've been in that church a long time. And you telling me no? I'm gone. You gone, but you won't mature. How many of you know sometimes we need to know? If we got a yes to everything, how many of you know we'd be messed, jacked up, tore up? God told him what God said. No. God says no he says and then after God said no the first time Paul said uh-uh that's a false spirit <laughs> that ain't right because God is not supposed to say no not the God I serve the God I serve says yes to everything so he goes the second time 
And guess what? When he goes back a second time, God still says, no. That demon, that ain't God. I've been in church a long time. I know the voice of God. I got the spiritual thing down pack. I know my scriptures. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So he goes to God the third time. And when he goes the third time, God say, no. So finally he understood that this is God speaking. And God is not saying what he wants to hear. God is saying, Paul, I'm going to carry you in the midst of this thorn. I'm going to listen to him. Whoever I'm preaching to, why did God give him a thorn? God did not give him a thorn because he didn't like him. God gave him a thorn because he knew his strength. So he had to keep the strength balanced with a weakness. So God will allow things to happen to keep you balanced. How many of you know God put some of us men and women, he put some of us together with the right person? Because if some of you women didn't marry the right man, you will drive them off the bunkers. Oh, y'all don't know none of the women said nothing. Do you know what that means? If you married a man and the man, and you used to spending, you used to spending, you used to spending. And if you marry somebody who give you spending, you would spend him out of house and home. You will have more things in the house when you spend. But God will give you a man that tells you how to have balance. He gives you what you need, not what you want. So God will bring the person in your life to give you balance. And balance is not always telling you yes. Balance is telling you what you don't want to hear. You're wrong. Oh, I ain't got the right church. You preacher. You preacher. You want it. God is keeping you balanced. So he said, I'm allowing this thorn because I know what I've given you. Somebody say, God knows what he gave me. God knows what he gave me. So he has allowed some things because he knows you. Touch yourself. Say, God know me. And let me help you understand you. You are a trip. Not just a trip, you are a trip and a vacation. Yes, and for some of us, you're not just a trip and a vacation, you are a journey. And God will put people in your life that will help you to remind you, you ain't all that in a bag of, you are, you are not all that in a bag of chips. You are all that in a bag of ch You won't find people in your life that will tell you the truth. You won't find people, not people who are going to blow your head up. Not people who are going to make you think that it's all you. Because the higher you go, they will watch you fall. And when you fall, they will not be there to catch you. They will laugh at you. They will mock you. They will tear you down. They will build you up. But they will not be there for you when you fall. You got to find people that will keep it real for you. That will walk with you in good and in bad. Preach, black man. Strength and weakness. Tell somebody, are you with, in, with me in strength? Are you with me in weakness? Are you with me when I'm sick and when I'm well? Oh, I don't believe you. You're saying it like you're scared. And he said unto me, watch what he, watch, we're in verse 9, Shivago. I'm so glad you're here today. And he said unto me, watch what he say. My grace, that seems so callous to me. I get bust in my head by the devil, you tell me my grace. A messenger of Satan to buffet me. And all Jesus, this is Jesus' answer, my grace. You're like, what? If I'm allowing you to go through it, I must know that you have what it takes to make it through it. Mm. Only my front row heard that. So some of you that are crying, some of you that won't leave, some of you that won't run, God is saying, my grace is there for you to handle it. Stop running from the job. I'm preaching. He said, my grace is sufficient. I don't run out of grace. Somebody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You hear what God said? My grace. So that means everything you need, God said, my grace is enough. Oh, Lashanda, everything you're going through, God said, my grace there. My grace for you in the hospital. My grace with you with cancer. My grace for you in death. My grace when your mother has dementia. My grace when you feel alone. God said, my grace will see you through it. Somebody shout grace. Shout grace. Think about all those areas in your life where you had no money and you thought, man, how am I going to make it? Didn't this grace bring you through it? Yes. Yeah. When you couldn't pay your light bill, couldn't put gas in the car, looking for change to put in the car to get some gas, and you're still here. His grace brought you through it. Yeah. Who am I talking to? If I'm talking to you, jump on your feet. Too slow. Sit down. Somebody shout grace. Yeah. 
Shout grace. Shout grace. Shout grace. Shout grace. Shout grace. The way you understand grace is how you made it out of everything before and it didn't kill you. Things you thought would have killed you, you survived it. How did you survive it? Because of I wish somebody would hear me preach today. How did you survive it? Because of that's where you should be. How did you survive it? Because of his grace is sufficient. Bishop, how, how, how I can make it through it? Bishop, how I can survive this marriage? Grace. Bishop, how I can survive these children? Grace. Bishop, how I can survive these bills? Grace. Bishop, how I can survive 2022? Grace. Bishop, how I can survive COVID? Grace. Ask somebody unsaved how they can survive. Grace. The needle. <laughs> See, somebody that's unsaved don't understand the grace of God. They might have heard it, but it can't be true until they experience it. Am I talking to anybody in here? See, for those of us that understand grace and where God has brought us from, it's alive. So we know because we survived it before, because I took the test before, I already know how to take this test. It was grace that... His grace was sufficient in 19. His grace was sufficient in 20. His grace was sufficient in 21. And His grace will be sufficient in 22. Somebody shout... He's letting Paul know. Listen, for you don't let me introduce you to Paul. Paul wrote most of the New Testament. And he's reminding Paul who's seeking him. My grace can take you through this, bro. So if God telling Paul that, guess what he's telling you? My grace can take you through it. But if you don't tap into the grace, then that's why you panic. How many of you know you panic, you begin to make wrong decisions? I wish I had a church, man. You panic, and that's why you say, man, I'm out of here. I don't want to deal with this no more. You move from city to city because you're panicking. You panic. That's why you get angry and hold grudges because you panic. You don't wait till God is finished doing what he's doing. When you get to the other side, you'll understand more clearly. If you listen to God, you will see God making you stronger in the thing you're going through. Say, what, why you say that, preacher? Why you say that? Because he never gives you what you can't handle. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Am I preaching right? Yes, you are. I'm not preaching right. Am I preaching right? Preaching. So what I'm going through, he's given me the grace to handle it. Watch what he said. He said, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength. Ooh. <laughs> Listen, this, this is so amazing to me. Minister Lang, listen to why this is so amazing, Rosa. He didn't say my strength is made perfect in strength. Because if God's strength was made perfect in strength, you would think you don't need God. You would think it's your strength. I just left you. I'm going to say it again. If God's strength was made perfect in strength, you would think it's you and not God. God has to make, tell you weak. Wait till you ain't got no more strength. Wait till you ain't got no more power. And then he picks you up so you could know that only God brought you through it. Yes. You would know you didn't make it this far on your own. All the people that was there supporting you, all the people who said they got your back, where are they now? Everybody say, man, where you go, I'll go. Ride or die. How many of you know life will show you just who is ride or die? Yes, it will. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. For some of you that don't believe it, where are some of your best friends right now? Some of them best friends that was your best friend. Boy, we were best friends. Where were some of those? And let me tell you when you recognize best friends are not really there. When you begin to climb the ladder, your best friends begin to change. It ain't you changing, no, they change. Because they begin to have the mindset that you think you're better. And they begin to have the mindset that they're changing. It's not that I'm changing. It's that you're not coming up with me. So if you're not coming with me, Amosa, you get left. You got to move with me. My wife, when she came here, for anybody that knows her, my wife is fully Asian, shy, used to pray to dead idols. Fung did not know her head from her tail. She would tell you that. She didn't know nothing about church agenda. She didn't know nothing about praying. She didn't know nothing about fasting. She didn't know nothing about ministry. She didn't know nothing about being the only Asian in a black church. Honey, I can't hear you. Man, I can't hear you still. She did not know nothing about church proto protocol. But what she did understand was she said, whatever God wants for me. You know what she was saying? God, your grace will carry me through. Yes. <laughs> now, 
if I go on a 21 day fast, Fong say she go on a 21 day fast. After we finish a 21 plus day fast is when Amori was birthed. He was birthed in the midst of a woman that did not know nothing about fasting. She waited on God's grace and God mature her. You run from the pain rather than letting God make you in the pain. You question why and stop asking God and don't ask God why not. And meaning that God take me through it because your grace is sufficient. What is he trying to birth in the midst of your pain? He said, listen to what he said. He said, Paul, you want weakness. You want a thorn. Oh, man. Let me say it again. You want a thorn because without a thorn, you won't recognize my strength. So it's the thorn that's going to cause you to recognize you need me. And then because you recognize you need me, you can teach others they need me. Because if, you, if I gave you all the knowledge, you would think you would teach others they need you. Mm. And you would take the focus off of God and you would put the focus on you. So I got to remind you what I got to use you to teach the people. I got to remind you what you got to put in the letters. Am I preaching to anybody? Oh, I, I dare say this to somebody. The leadership that God has put in your heart, in your mind, you should not give up on. But go through your training so when you get to the place of leadership, it will prepare you to be the greatest leader that the country has ever seen. Don't give up on your dream. Touch somebody say, don't give up on your dreams. I don't believe you. Touch somebody say, don't give up on your dreams. Hey, Jesus got into the boat, right? He tell his disciples, for those who don't understand me, he said, go through, we going to the other side. Where we going? Oh, I don't hear you. Where you say we going? How are you going to the other side and never showed us the storm? When they got in the middle of the sea, the storm came. But guess what was in the boat? Grace, you'll get that later. The grace was in the boat. Oh my God, God already knew that in the midst of the sea there would come a storm. God already knew what was coming into your life before it came. But what he's saying is, I can get you through this with my grace. And there was something in the boat to teach them. So he made it a teachable moment. He said, Peter, he said, it's your unbelief, it's faith. He was trying to teach them faith because he knew the day that would come that he would not be there. And they would have to stand on their own. God knows what's coming to America. He knows what's coming to the world. He knew what Putin would attack Russia. Not everything that's happened in the world, God knows. So he's preparing us by faith for what's coming. He knew COVID would come. He knew B28 would come. He knew the viruses would come. But he's trying to prepare us as a church for what's coming. How are you prepared without a test? How are you prepared without trials? You want the greater, but you don't want the trial. Everything you dip, everything you pray for. I hear some of y'all, God, I want a husband. I want a husband. I want a husband. God, send me a husband. How you, God, can send you a husband that has to be the priest of your home, and he gives you instructions, and God gives you a pastor that gives you instruction, and you don't obey him. If you can't obey the leader that God placed in your life, how will you obey a, a husband? If you can't obey those who God has put in leadership in your life to speak into you. When a husband tells you, honey, I feel like we should do this. Be like, do what? I don't feel like you're 22,022, bro. I make more money than you. Am I preaching right? I make more money than you. You don't do what I do. I don't do what you say. I run this house. I am preaching, I left the church, I left the church, I left the church. Because it's happening, which you got to understand. you got to allow that man to be the spiritual priest that God has placed in that home. The Bible says, husband, love your wives and wives, submit yourself to your husband. Husband, love your wives and wives, submit. God knew why he said that. He knew women's problem would be submission and men's problem would be love. Let's ride, let's go. He said, my strength is made perfect in strength. You ain't got to like me. My strength is made perfect in strength. I can't hear you. My strength is made perfect in strength. So why are you crying about your weakness? Why are you trying to get rid of people that God has allowed to be in your life? Why are you running from the test and blaming other people for what God has allowed? Somebody say training for reigning. That ain't everybody. Say training for reigning. You're being trained where you're at. An usher can train you with a bad attitude. Somebody serving food could train you. I ain't going to that kitchen no more. 
Because I watch, and you know the things that train us, sometimes we're so petty. Somebody get a chicken wing and they gave somebody else your chicken leg and you mad, you ain't going to the kitchen no more. Because somebody gave you a leg over the wing or gave the wing over the leg. You wanted pork chop and they gave you chicken. He said, you know what? I know that that was that person's favorite. How about God could have been testing you? We are so petty in the church. Did I just say that? You said it. You said it. Holding on to petty things. Look, touch somebody real quick. Say, don't be petty. No, no, that ain't the right church. Touch them. They can be mad at you. Touch them. They don't be petty. Why y'all telling me? Look them in the eyes. Say, don't be petty. I can't believe you ain't leave me no rice. Go make some more rice. <laughs> and he said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect. I love this in weakness. Uh -huh. He said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. He said, I'm glorying in it because God revealed to me. This is how I'm made strong. This is where God's power is shown is when I'm weak. You know the greatest witness in, and okay, you know the greatest prayer you will ever pray is when you're broken? The greatest prayer you will ever pray is when you're broken. It's when you take that pain into prayer and you get before God. And whatever is pain in you, God never shows you the person. He always is flipping on you. True prayer, God never shows you the other person. Oh, I wish I had somebody real in here. Say, prove it. Jesus, this woman was caught in adultery. We caught her. And they brought her to Jesus. Jesus said, yeah. He without sin. Flip it. Cast the first stone. Hey, Jesus, you didn't catch us. We caught her. And we brought her to you for you to judge her. Jesus' response was to them. You without sin. Jesus will flip the script on you and make you look at you. You blaming the other people and God saying, God never answered Paul. He said, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And when he had the revelation, he said, I rather glory. So, what are you saying? He passed the test. What do you mean he passed the test? He didn't pray a fourth time. He didn't pray a fifth time. He didn't pray a sixth time. He didn't pray a seventh time. He got the revelation when he get the revelation, then the test becomes A, B, C. The reason why the test isn't A, B, C is because you don't have the revelation of what God is doing and why. I'll say it again. The reason why the test isn't A, B, C is because you don't have the revelation of what he's doing and why. Paul had the revelation. You have knowledge, so I got to put a thorn. Because of the abundance of revelation, I got to put a thorn. And not just that, in my weakness, you made strong. And then after that, the case was closed. So he said, I rather glory, meaning I got the answer. So I ain't crying over it no more. I'm going to write the letters. Do you know how most people who operate in ministry? Do you know how most people who come to church? Because they wait until they're perfect first. I just left you. Now you're making me come back down. <laughs> We're about to close. Come Shadrach. You know why most people don't come to church, most people don't operate in ministry, they're waiting to be perfect first. I don't want to be a hypocrite when I, come, when I do something. I don't want to pray in tongues because I don't want to be a hypocrite when I pray in tongues. I don't, we always make excuses why I don't be a hypocrite. A hypocrite never cares about being a hypocrite. They're just a hypocrite. So just the mere fact that you're saying that you don't want to be a hypocrite is an excuse. Because if you were a hypocrite, hypocrites don't care. A hypocrite. When was the last you see a hypocrite saying, I don't want to be a hypocrite? <laughs> J.B., you're the only one that got that. So the mere fact that you're saying, I don't want to be a hypocrite, it shows that you're hearted before God. But God is saying that is an excuse because you're allowing your excuses from keeping you from functioning in God. David had thorns. Thorns. A few of them. Joseph had thorns. A few of them. He went to his brothers. This is what I dream, bruh. I saw the sun, the moon, the stars bowing to me. My father made me a coat of many colors. So God said, yeah, I'm going to allow you to be put in a pit. <laughs> ah. Oh, Shabago. God still got prime minister in mind. I'm telling you that. I know that by the spirit, God has not changed his mind. You know, I know. Ah. How could God still have the things in mind in the midst of all the things we go through? Because God, it's the things we go through that makes us ready for leadership.
So when we get there, we don't forget God. How do you know Joseph was ready for leadership? The little scene that you ask, I will tell you. Go on. It's come over here. Saba kuteva. Isimo kwali esimo ndai seba. Now for those who just asked, they said, what do you just say? Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit just said. He said his thorn was his family. His family, his family, everything he was around was family problems. Family put him in the pit. Family put him in the pit. And when he went into the port of his house, family again. The man that he had favor with, the wife accused him. Family again. Then another family. Then he had to be put in prison. The reason why he had to be put in prison for those who were asking, because God was getting ready to make him a family for nations. And if he was a bitter, if he was a bitter family man, he would have been a bitter leader. Because you could only produce who you are. Bitterness only. Oh, say preach black man. I don't feel you. Say preach black man. I don't hear you. Say preach black man. Preach black man. Say preach black man. Preach black man. Because bitterness only breeds bitterness. You could only breed who you are. His thorn was his family. What's your thorn and you trying to change your name? What's your thorn? He's trying to change jobs. What's your ch- thorn? He's trying to change a mind. I ain't dating him no more. I'm so sick of him. I ain't dating him no more. Tell somebody, deal with it. Deal with you're it. telling me. I, I, y'all listen. Y'all missing the small part. I didn't say tell me. Tell the person next to you. Say deal with it. Deal with it. Uh, look at Monica. Monica, you still you ain't telling me. Tell her. Tell somebody, deal with, deal with it. You can't run from it. You got to lie. I ain't shopping it. I ain't in my so quiet. You want some more? Let me give you some more. The greatest form of healing is not medication. The greatest form of healing is when the body heals it. We're supposed to be healing each other. We kill each other. We are supposed to be each other's healer. Oh, five of y'all. Somebody say, God gave it to me. God gave it to say, God gave it to me. God if you ain't want, even if you ain't want to say that, because you know some of us are so spiritual, say, God allowed it. God allowed it. I don't know which one is worse. God gave it to me or he allowed it. You go home and you debate that at home. Which one is worse? God gave it or he allowed it. Which one is worse? Which one is worse? How do we break that down, scholars? Which one is worse? God gave it or allowed it? Uh, neither one. That's exactly right. Because you still got to deal with it either way. Correct? Whether he gave it or he allowed it, you still got to deal with it. But it's all designed to make you better. How, who wants to get better in the room? Put your hand down. Who wants to get better? Who wants to get better? Start looking at what you're going through and stop running from it and say, God, make me better. Because God still got nations on his mind. God still got countries on his mind. God still got his dream, your dream on his mind. God still has everything he wants, NBA and Championship. God still had it on his mind. God has not changed his mind. Everything you desire, God has where? On his mind. Where does God have it? On his mind. Where does God have it? On his mind. God did not change his mind because of Paul's thorn. He said, Paul, my grace can see you through this. We're going to see you through. This is key. I really heard this before I came. You can't make it through on your own. Some hurts are so deep, it could paralyze you. There's no hurt like family hurt. Boy, I wish I had somebody real in here. There's no hurt like close people to you hurt. When you're betrayed by someone you trusted. It's easy to be somebody who trusts you who you expected to trust you. But how do you explain a hurt by somebody you trust? Oh, I wish I had somebody real. So if you're not careful and understand that it's God's grace... The hurts that life will bring with you could take you out. That's why people commit suicide. That's why people become addicts and drug addicts. And that's why people lose their mind. They go crazy. That's why people snap. Because when pressure comes, they forget that it was just grudge, grace can see you through it. So some of you in here that are dealing with things right now, Bishop, how am I going to make it through? You got to remember God's grace. Because there's a female by she, you know what I heard the Lord said? See, the fight sometimes that we go through, please hear this, is not just flesh and blood. It ain't like human to human. Some fight that's going on above you is a, is a spiritual thing. There are word curses. There are 
witchcraft and sorcery. So there's a spiritual battle at work that don't want you to succeed. There's a messenger of Satan said. Am I making sense to you? So it becomes a spiritual battle where things are fought in the spirit realm and you got to praise your way through it. You got to come around believers who will encourage you through it. Stop feeling like you could do it on your own because you can't. One of the first things we do when we hurt is isolate ourselves. Who am I talking to? One of the first things we do when we go in through deep hurts is we isolate ourselves. Because what happens is I don't trust nobody, I don't want to be around nobody, and the devil isolates you and kills you. The quickest way to eat a banana is to pluck it from its bunch. There's safety in the cluster. Eva. There's safety. Mm. The devil don't want you to be around each uh, be honest to be around each other. That's why he calls offense, because he knows we stay together, we strengthen each other, we divide it, we fall. You got to be the one like Joseph to stand strong because there's a nation you must lead. The devil's not trying to fight you, he's trying to fight your future. The way he fights your future is by fighting those who are closest to you. That's why you got to know God's grace will see me through this. Mama, I love you. Daddy, I love you. Wife, I love you. Husband, I love you. Friends, I love you. But at the end of the day, God, I trust you. So when hurts come and blows come, I take it, but I survive in the midst of it because I know it's grace that brought me this far. If you hear me, stand on your feet. I said, if you hear me, stand on your feet. We got to go. We got to go. Y'all don't preach me enough. I don't do baptism. I don't got up on my bed at four o'clock. I don't do, I don't preach out. My day has not ended. I don't preach enough to you today. You can handle it. You can handle what you're trying to quit on. You can handle who you're trying to leave and who you're running from. You can handle where you're trying to come bitter. You can handle who's trying to leave you. You can handle the rumors and the accusations. You can handle who don't want your kids to see you and want you to see your kids. You can handle it. They expect for you to lose your mind. Why do they expect for you to lose your mind? And you haven't lost it because God's grace is sufficient for me. Hallelujah. Oh, Monica, you felt that. I can handle the doctor's report. I can handle when I'm going through financial pressure. I can handle it because God's grace is sufficient. And I said this to somebody the other day. You know, we so concentrate on what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with us as humans. As who? As five of y'all. As who? We're so quick to think about what's wrong. What about what's right in your life? I don't know why we like that. Some of us are so quick to think about what's wrong and all the things that's wrong. What about what's right? You ain't got all the money you want, but at least you got two legs. That's right. <laughs> You ain't got the house you want, but at least you breeding with nothing hooked up to you. I'd left you. We only look at what's wrong. I got all the money to pay my bills. I text somebody the other day, you ain't got all the money to pay your bills, but you got some money to pay some bills. Thank God for the bills you pay. I tell them. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm where I used to be. I'm a lot further. You got to thank God for where he brought you from. Look at somebody say, stop your complaining. Stop it. Stop it. Look him in the eye. Say, stop it. Give him a rebuke. Say, stop it. Think about what's right. My children ain't acting right. At least they ain't in jail. Thank God for that. Look at what's right. Five of y'all. My children so bad. This husband I got so bad. You gotta thank God. At least your children are not dead. Last week, my I just was out of town, maybe two weeks ago, week and a half ago. A mother came to the church. She's probably watching. I know she's watching. Her son was killed, 20 years of age, drive-by shooting, bullet hit the car 13 to 16 times, dead, wrong place at the wrong time. And they were not looking for him. Dead. Thank God you could still look at your children. They're alive. You gotta think about what's good in your life. I know y'all hear me, y'all clap. Y'all gonna clap me straight into net tomorrow and then forget everything I say. You gotta sustain this to your spirit because this is how you make it. Think about the good. Think about what's right and then thank God for the right people in your life. And learn to tell them people thank you. Some are so selfish, people bless us all day and we forget to say thank you. You must never forget to say thank you. 
Never forget to show, am I preaching right? Never forget to show people you appreciate them. Never forget even through a text message you, just I thank you. I tell my wife, thank you. You ask her. I tell her. I don't even try to tell her. I tell her. Whether she hears it or not. Whether she receives it or not. Because I don't want to forget to say thank you. Never forget to say thank you. Because a lot of things you take for granted, a lot of people don't have. Am I preaching right? I left you. If you hear me today, take a step forward. We're about to go. You're crying about stuff God allowed. God had to prepare Fung to be your first lady. A lot of you that are wondering why God is allowing your wife or your husband to go through certain things, because he has to prepare them for where he wants to take them. And some of you that are still single, he's preparing you for when he comes. But you got to appreciate where you are. If you hear me take another step, I'm preaching to somebody in this room. Are you listening today, little man? Little, you listening today? Raise your hands to heaven. Some of us, we, so we, I wish I was born here. I wish I had this daddy. I wish I had this, this. I wish I had that. Get out of here. Do you know some things you wish for can make you a worse person? Money can make you a terrible person if you're not careful. You want them to prepare you for the money. If you mean without money, what you think you'd be like with money? If you just, the whole church just missed that. I'm coming for you again. I say, if you mean without it, what would you be like with it? Uh oh. If you stingy and ain't got no money, what you gonna be like when you get money? You'll be stingy. <laughs> Raise your hands to heaven if you hear me. Oh, the thing about being surrendered, you don't raise one hand, you know. True surrender is you. Go to the police officer and he say you're under arrest and raise one hand. The next time the police tell you you're under arrest, raise your hand. Raise one. Oh, you get that, Stacy. True surrender means, God, I surrender two arms in the air. That's true surrender. One arm in the air is like, I kind of surrender. <laughs> Tomorrow I'll surrender. Not today. Not to you or this church will I surrender. <laughs> Father, we come to you today. Somebody say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. For my thorn. Anybody got a thorn besides me? Listen, I, I know you're talking about mine. I, okay, I, listen to what I said. I said, does anybody have a thorn besides me? Is your thorn name Annie Maria? What's your thorn name, Annie Lucy? Oh, your thorn is Auntie Goosey. What's your thorn? Everybody got a thorn. Whether your thorn is fried chicken, big chicken. But the thing about us is we like to point at other people's thorn, but we will never look at our own. I said, if you got a thorn in here, anybody got a thorn, take a step. You know you got a thorn. Oh, look at some of y'all still looking at other people's thorn. I, John and you, they ain't stepping. Let me and you step, bro. Let the resident, they ain't got no thorn. Anybody got a thorn, take a step. A thorn is that shorter temple. That, you know what thorn could be? Thorn could be it's a lonely, just a spirit of loneliness, depression, all that thorn you allowing, and God saying, uh uh, my grace can get, get up out of it. Stop having a pity party. Am I preaching right? Thorn, would I, anybody got a thorn? Take another step. You know why I'm making you take step? Because some of y'all got nine and ten and twenty and thirty thorns. <laughs> like Bishop, I try and identify the thorn. I don't. You, I got so much. I don't know which one is the thorn. <laughs> anybody hear me? Who's that? Somebody say, I don't know which thorn. I got. I got one. I think I got about twenty. I Chicago, they trying to figure which thorn. This church, Chicago, pray for me, sir. You got to pray for jump. I try and this. I've been working with him. <laughs> which thorn, Bishop? You keep saying a thorn. That's why I ain't stepping because I got twenty. <laughs> Close your eyes. Somebody say we win. We win. Let me tell you why. Eyes closed because of grace. Oh, yeah, whoever said thank you, God. See, because we glory in our infirmities. Eyes closed. See, people in the world don't have that. We think we're so second class. When we have the revelation that we're bad to the bone, it's troubling in the house. 
when they see us coming be like oh my god here they come here's that army because we change atmospheres because we have the revelation that we are who we are because of grace we have who would we have because of grace we drive would we drive because of grace we wear would we wear because of grace because if you knew where we were and to where we are now baby you would know it's nothing but the grace if you knew where we were rosa come rosa i know you're watching me come rosa come on the stage come on the stage Come on the stage. Yeah, I call you. I call you, baby. I call you. Do you know this young lady was dying of cancer? Come, Mother Anna, come with her. The doctors didn't know whether she would even live. Ask one, let, she'll tell the story one day when she's ready. Cancer was eating her out from the inside. She thought she would die. Eating her body. Come, come. They told her she'd never be able to raise her hands. Am I talking right? They told her she'd never be able to raise her hands. She's not here because of no, no doctor, no medication, because I took chemo and the chemo did it. It was grace because they did tell her, we don't know if you're going to live or die. Stage four, did you have stage four cancer? Three. But three, four, they all sound the same to me. Because when you hear three, it sounds like a, set, a death sentence that's being signed. Stage three cancer. But today, let me see you raise your hand. They say you will raise your hands. It's true, I'm not making it up. I know y'all think I'm making it up. She had stage three cancer. Didn't they have to remove her breasts? I can't hear you. Did they have to move her breasts? They had to, they had to move both your breasts. The cancer was eating her out. She was there with her daughter today getting water baptized. She said, Bishop, I'm giving my daughter to God because His grace is grace. I may not understand everything. I may not know why. And that's why you must praise Him. That's why she must be in church praising Him. I don't, may not understand everything about church, but I know I could have had a dead mother. My mother didn't have to be here. But because I see her giving glory to God is why I want to know this God. This God got to be real. Come here. Somebody punch your hands at them. Look at some of y'all hating. Punch your hand, punch your finger. Say grace. grace. That's what you see. See grace. Grace, grace, grace. See, if you look at it, so bad. See, what God will do with grace is he will cause grace to be a reflection of him. So when someone goes to Rosa right now, when you say, Shavago, bring them closer, remember he said that when they come closer, when they go to Rosa right now, Rosa will be able to say, it's the grace. So she's the testament of how powerful grace is. In the midst of facing death in the face. That's why you can't allow some people to take you out of church. Because no one went through cancer like you. See, some of us, we hook up the people who ain't never had cancer. That's why you can't never let no one take your story. Oh, I left y'all a long time ago. Because you don't know like I know what God has done. You don't know like I know what God has done for you You don't know what I know. You don't know like I Clap your hand. I give God glory. Give him glory. He's watching. Give him praise. He's watching. Give him honor. He's watching. You don't know like I know. You don't know like I know. But God... Done. See, it's a story. So when they say, why are you going to church? Why are you getting up so early and taking your daughter in the cold to be baptized? Because I know the grace. Oh, I wish I had somebody. I know the grace. I know the grace of God. I know the grace of God. If you hear me, raise your hands. I've seen it in my life. I've seen his grace. Everything I have is because of his grace. Is anybody besides me, everything that I'm doing and able to still do is because of the grace. And his grace brought me this far. So I hear you feel like you hear me. And his grace will take me the rest of the way. The pain is because of what he has on the other side. He hasn't changed his mind. Don't get, oh, I wish I could money. Whoever will hear me, hear me. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Because you will reap. What you will do? What you gonna do? If you what? So that means weary comes before reaping. Think 
comes before reaping. But you got to make it through the weariness and you got to make it through the faint season. Eyes closed in the room, in the room. Yeah, somebody get it. That's it, baby. You understand. See the rest of them just, oh, eyes closed in the room, in the room, in the room. Eyes closed in the room. See grace. See grace. Grace brought us through last year. Grace kept us in the midst of COVID. Grace did it. I know some people took the vaccine. And I'm not, I, listen, I want you to hear me. But before the vaccine came, it was grace. Even when the vaccine came and you took it, it was still grace. Some people got paralyzed from it. It's grace in every area of your life. Somebody say, I need it. God's grace, God's grace, God's grace. Whose grace? grace? I want you to hear that. God's grace, God's grace, God's grace. You know, eyes closed. I know, I know you're gonna be able to handle this, but I'm going. I'm going because I'm the pastor, you see, and I'm the leader, and you gotta ride with me or don't ride. When Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, when he did what? Slapped him. They said Denzel Washington went to him and tell him the devil is busy. He said, the devil is busy when you go high. He tries to make you go low. He said, the devil is busy. You know what that tells me? Denzel Washington has a revelation about God's grace. Oh, you missed it. You missed it. Denzel Washington say, man, bro, you got all the money. You got all the fame. He said, wow. He said, be careful, bro. He said, when you win it, when you win it. He said, the devil is be busy. The devil is be busy. That means to tell me that. And then after that, for those who don't believe it, then T.D. Jakes inter interviewed Denzel Washington. And Denzel Washington said in the interview, if it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't for the grace, the grace, the grace, y'all don't believe me. Ah, but I see that. Eyes closed. All I'm trying to get you to do, you ain't got to like me, you ain't got to know me, you ain't got to know my name, you ain't got to come back. Oh, you could be passing through, John, but oh, remember, grace will bring you through life. Just hear this word today. Grace will bring you through life. Grace will carry you through pain, man. The grace of God will. I don't know if you know Jesus in this room, but you don't want to leave here without knowing him. I had some bosses and people in my life be like, Lord, where did they come from? But the grace helped me through them. I had some leaders I did not understand, but grace helped me through them. And today I'm still here because of grace. Whoever's saying yes, hear me. Father, raise your hands, close your eyes. You're going to make it through the job. You're going to make it through the storm. You're going to make it through the injury. You're going to make it through the season with the drought, the money issues. You're going to make it through whatever pressure in you. You're going to make it through it. But you're going to know what helped you through it. You're going to remember to give God the glory. And you can teach others to give him the glory. Eyes closed in the room. Father, today I commit this service into your hand. I tell people all the time, and some of you get the revelation, and some of you still trying to get it. The greatest investment you could ever make is in the church. The greatest investment, some people invest in Bitcoin, some people invest in stocks, some people invest in different companies, and nothing wrong with it. You make your investment wherever you will. In fact, if you've had some good investments, tell me, but I can tell you what is the greatest investment. The greatest investment is in the kingdom. But you don't believe it, let me, proof is, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he said, all these things shall be added. You can't go wrong in giving in the church. Don't let the world tell you you lose in tithes and offering. It's a lie. You give to the Lord and the Lord will give back to you. That's a law. He said give and it shall be given back to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. That's a law. He said I will command blessings on you. He said I will command the blessings on you. Three y'all. You ain't got to believe me. I am blessed. Eyes closed. What am I? I am so blessed. I am so blessed. And I'm telling you, anybody wonder why I'm so blessed? I am. I am. Don't let the plaza fool you. I got three TV stations right now that we own. 
we own today. Service is not just being televised here. I have a TV station in Gaines Channel in Gainesville. Am I talking right, Shadrach? I, man, I can't. The back can't hear you because they can think I'm lying. I said the back can't hear you. They can think I'm lying. We have our own channel in Gainesville. Am I talking the truth, Shadrach? Our own channel. I didn't say internet. I said our own channel. And we have our own channel in Orlando. I will be on TV today at 3 o'clock. Everything I have is because of God's grace. Don't let the plaza fool you. The day may come to this plaza that we may own it. Don't let it fool you. I am a blessed black man. I am. I am. I am. I am. Let me tell you why I am blessed. Eyes closed. Why are you clapping for me? I'm blessed because I made my investment in the kingdom. It'll be hard for you to outgive me. Ask my wife. She lives with me. Ask her. Pull on the side. Say, does he give? Pull on the side. She'll be like, oh my God. I follow. Ask her. Pull on. Sneak on the side. Say, does your husband give? She'll tell you, I don't know why he's giving the way he's giving sometimes. She's like, I'm still trying to figure that part out. Close your eyes. He gives the people that hurt him. Okay. Ask God. The greatest investment you could ever make is in the kingdom. Don't ever think you lose in giving. Whoever said amen felt me. Some of you that hoard your money, when you die, they can only fight for it. You can leave it for them to fight over. And then most of them, they can, some of them can try to change the will anyhow. They can try to say, they can try to annul the will. Family get divided over money. Three, or live long enough here. Raise your hands in the air, don't get, you're still under arrest. Offering is going to come around. You have a chance to invest in the kingdom. Give God something to do what? Oh, I wish I had a church. Close your eyes. Give God what? Something to work with. Is your offering giving him something to work with? Yes. 100% yes. When you give in Bitcoin, they look back to see if it increased. They expect it to increase. That's why they make investments. When you make investment in the kingdom, you should expect for God to multiply. There's no greater investor. Isn't that good? Real. Isn't that awesome? God, somebody say, God got me, got me, got me, got me, got me. You believe that? You believe that? Say, God got me, got me, got me. Say it again. Say, God got me, got me, got me. You got me. Clap your hands if you believe that. Clap. I say if you believe it. Like clap your hands. You clapping for me. Clap your hands like you believe that God got you. I say clap your hands if you believe that God got you. Sit down. You let me get ready to give your best to the Lord. This lady in the purple enjoyed service today. She had to come. No, don't move yet. Let one of the men come. 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 They wanted to make, oh, look a little Chris. Yeah, yeah, help her. But it could be two. It could be two. Everybody get an offering quickly. Give it to the Lord. Somebody say grace. Grace. Say grace. Grace. I want you to run somebody, look them in the eye and say grace. Run to somebody, look them in the eye. Uh-uh, you go, you so slow. They need it. They need it. Look them in the eye. Say grace. Run to somebody, look them in the eye. Don't be scared. You waking them up. Run to them and look them in the eye. Say grace. Oh, Catherine, you taking too long. If you got to think about it, run to him and tell him in the eye. Say, grace, 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 grace. Somebody find Minister Zhivago. Say, grace, sir. Say, grace. I don't know you, but my pastor tell you to find you. Look him in the eye. Say, grace. Look him in the eye. Say, grace. I need three people to look him in the eye. I didn't say hug him. I say, look him in the eye. Say, grace. Somebody write your envelopes. I thank God for his grace. How you going out the door and ain't give no offering? My God, I mean, the restaurant you go to no so we'll send the popo for you. Amen. <laughs> Say, everybody shout grace, grace, grace. Write grace, grace, grace. Should write it three times. Grace, 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 grace. Grace, 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 grace. 
Thank you. Thank you. Very good looking out. And I didn't even have to tell you that. You see the young lady normally do it. You just did it for your bishop. Except she's right on it. You ain't right on it. But you did good. You gave me it. Somebody write grace. How you spell grace? God riches at Christ's expense. That's just a nit tip. You get that one later. God's riches at Christ's expense. His grace is unlimited. It's unlimited grace. Grace. Write that on. Write on the envelope. That's your seed. That's what's going into the offering. You're telling God, God, continue to have grace on my life. Continue to have grace on my life. God, when they move so I heard. So good you made it through it. Wave the envelopes. I hear you all right. Wave it through it. Wave it through it. Everybody wave the envelopes. If you write your seed on it, wave it. Honey, this lady right here in the purple, give her a high five for me. In the purple, she gave her a high five for me. Give her a high five. Say, that's for my husband. Give her a high five. Give her a high five. Give her a high five. Just a high, I didn't say hug. I said give her a high five. Like give her a high five. Boy, you could tell. Boy, you coming. Let me show you give a high five. Come on. Let me show you give a high five. You give a high five like that. Go give a high five. Give a high. That's how you give a high. Five. That was an Asian high five. Since she did like that. That's how Asians do it. A lot of people do it like. Wave the envelopes in the air, wave them in the air, wave them in the air. Wave them in the air, wave them. Anybody need grace in the room? Oh, I, I don't know where Tamala is. Where's Tamala today, Shonda? She took a break today. She playing hooky. Y'all pray for Tamala. I need to have grace with her. Amen. Wave them in the air, wave them in the air. Shadrach looks so GQ. Y'all ain't see Shadrach with his gold pocket piece. His gold turtleneck. Shadok say, I'm all gold today. I'm gold today. I'm gold today. I'm gold today. I think gold is the color today. I'm gold today. Come here, let's see you. Come here, let me see you. Come here, I see you. Come here, GQ. You might as well.